Hi, is this the Kingdom Hall? Yes. Um, I just had a Bible question I was wondering if someone could help me with. Okay. Do you have a minute? I think so. Okay. Well, um, I was kind of thinking about the verses Philippi- uh, Philippians 1, 1 and 2. <laughs> We're right in the middle of a police investigation here because someone broke in. So. Oh, no. Like during yeah. the night or something? That? Christine. Christine. Yeah. From White Famine area? Oh, no, I don't live around there. I just wanted to ask a witness about this because I've been studying some things from the website and such. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What Did somebody break in in the middle of the night or something like that? Yeah. They oh, broke no. in the door and they, like, went through everything trying to find money and made a huge mess. And wow. And a laptop and some microphones and stuff like that. Wow. Not that, thankfully, it wasn't anything too serious. Yeah, but. yeah. Okay, well, if this isn't a good time. Have you been, have you been studying with the with this? Oh, I did just use. An on, just I did, an online study. Yeah, I did used to uh, for a while, a couple of years ago. Where do you live now? Um, I live in Arizona. Oh, are you calling from Arizona? Yeah, I just wanted to talk to a witness. Oh, I'm surprised you called White Salmon for. Yeah, it's listed. You're listed. Well, they all are, really, but. Um, Crazy. So Philippians, what was it? Oh, I thought you said you didn't have time right now. Oh no, I didn't say that. Oh, no, okay. Oh, you were just Bible stuff. I telling just me about that. Business. Oh, just tell me. Let's, yeah. Let's see what your question is. Okay. Out of curiosity. Do you have it up? Philippians, what? One, one and two. One, one and two. Paul and Timothy, slaves of Christ Jesus, to all the holy ones in union with Christ Jesus who are in Philippi along with overseers and ministerial servants. May you have undeserved kindness and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So what is your question? Okay, well, um, the part where, um, well, a couple of different parts, where it says servants of Christ Jesus. Um, do you guys ever speak in those terms? I have never heard a witness say they were a servant of Christ Jesus, just that they... Um, they're the only people that are like him and walk in his footsteps as like an exemplar. Mm -hmm. Do you guys ever refer to that? Like, I can't really find much on the website either. I looked it up. There was only a few references. Most of them are just Bible quotes. They didn't really elaborate. You know, in James 1.1, it said, James calls himself a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you know, he's saying in the same way in a religious context, which I think is really interesting. Well, we're definitely slaves of Jehovah, our God, mm-hmm. and of Jesus Christ, you bet. Yeah. He's in charge I, of the Christian congregation, so he's the head of the congregation, so we're definitely slaves of, of him, you bet. Yeah. It, well, it's, to me, it's interesting that they juxtapose God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ together being um, servants or slaves of him. You know, like it reminds me of where it says in John 5 that all should honor the Son as they honor the Father. Oh, you bet. In the same way. In the same way. Oh, definitely. We do. We do. I don't don't really see that in the publications. Um, We worship the Father Jesus is worshipped along with the Father in Revelation chapter 5. Do you worship Jesus? Well, everything goes through Jesus. He and he's the head of the congregation. I mean, yeah. even our prayers go through him to our Father. So you don't worship do Jesus like worship, they do in do heaven? we actually worship Jesus yeah. as God? No, not as okay. the Almighty God, but we do worship him as the Son so how that he's part of, he's part of, he's, he's the first creation of his father. He's you would worship a creation? Of, the, the head of the congregation. We uh-huh. don't really worship him as oh, such. We worship Jehovah uh-huh. through him. You bet. Just like, well, like he's worshipped in that. Revelation 5. So that's a curious thing. Have you ever read that passage? Revelation 5? Yeah, 12 through 14. Are you still there? Yeah. Oh, okay. 
it's lamb finding it here. Yeah. Spotted is worthy to receive the power and the riches and the wisdom and the strength and the honor and the glory and the blessing. In that part. Yeah, and the next two verses. Once seated on the throne and to the Lamb be the blessings and the honor and the glory and the might and forever and ever. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, and the four beasts so said, they, so Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that lives forever and ever. So are you trying to are you are you trying to learn or are you trying to Dispute. Oh, well, I was just sharing some scriptures. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know we get, we get a lot of people that love to love to argue. Yeah, argue. I was just wondering. Um, yeah, because you, being a servant of Jesus and God, you know, the Father and the Son. That's it's really interesting because the the Bible says to serve. God the Father as well in, in James it says he was a servant of God the Father and the Son um, and then also I mean grace and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ I mean how could an angel a created being be our source of grace and peace only God can give grace now in your Bible I know it says un, what does it say unmerited no un deserved kindness it doesn't really use the word grace which I think there's a big difference between that and what grace really means now which scripture are you on now oh that's still in, in Philippians this one verse 2 I was talking about how gr- grace and peace is is sourced from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ I was wondering how grace and peace can come from a created being Does grace and peace come from a created yeah. being? You, you say that Jesus is just a created being, but this says grace and peace to you. Grace really meaning in the New Testament unmerited favor, like we're justified by his grace. <clears throat> Not just like he did, oh, he did something nice for you, like he gave you something, one thing you don't deserve. And, yeah. you, don't think, and you don't think Jesus would be capable of that? No, no, not a created being to be a source of our grace and peace. No. Really? Do you? Even, even though, oh yeah. Uh huh. Hmm. Oh yeah, heck yeah. As God's only begotten Son, you bet. He was in the heavens with His Father during the creation process of everything. You bet He's capable of that. Did the did the witnesses ever used to teach to worship Jesus? Did they ever used to teach what? To worship Jesus. Did they ever used to worship Jesus? Yeah, did they teach it was proper to worship Jesus in their in their past history? I don't know. They did. They did? Yeah. Wow. I think they changed it around 1950, which is really interesting because that's when they came out with their own Bible, too. What do you mean their own Bible? The New World Translation, and you every every time it says Bible? every time it says worship in regard to Jesus, they change it to obeisance. Uh, I don't know about that. And in Hebrews one six, I have one of their older New World Translations, where it says in Hebrews one six, "Let all God's angels worship Him." Speaking of well, Jesus, so what church do you belong to? Um, I fellowship with other Christians, but. I like lots of different fellowships. I don't, we don't promote, you know, our, our organization or, well, we don't even call it an organization. We don't even have membership, actually. But, um, you know, would you like the references on worship do you, do you, of Jesus? Do you, think, do you think it's possible for what you're doing to get the preaching work done around the year? Like oh, all, yeah, all Christians so. together. And I, I believe it was also a corporate call because... It's fulfilled corporately in many different ways. According I don't know. I've been a member of like about 50 different churches. 50? And um, I tell you what, I guess nobody, it, else, nobody else doing the work that we're doing, getting the preaching work done. How do you know that? Why, why are you so small still then? How do I know that? Yeah. Because there's like 
There's like eight million of us out in the door to door ministry million? promoting the Bible teachings, and nobody else is doing that. You know that that Seventh Day Adventists are what twenty five million. You're going to be able to. You think you're going to be able to get the preaching work done around the earth and with your organization? First of all, I like I said, I believe it's a corporate um, mandate, the Great Commission. Because, and there's a reason, there's a reason for that, because the New Testament talks about, hello? Hello, Kingdom Hall. Hi, um, I just had a question I was wondering if someone could help me with. Yes. Do you have a minute? Uh, okay, um, what's your question? Okay, uh, well, it's something I saw in the, um, I was reading the recent Watchtower magazine on the website, JW Org. Okay. Oh, okay. It's talking about, like, reasons for preaching. Yes. Did you read that one? Well, I, I know it's, like, it's, um, they post them, like, way ahead of time, so it's kind of like, what is it, April or May or something? Oh, yeah, May, May, it's May one. But, um, yeah, this article on um, bearing fruit, uh it says that means enduring and preaching the kingdom message. Um, but it doesn't mention that in John chapter 15, which is, which is interesting in and of itself. But, um, they give like the, like four reasons for preaching. Um, and I was just wondering, uh, they left out one of the reasons that I thought is so, um, important or actually, surprising kind of that I've read before in their publications. I was wondering if they changed that or, I mean, it seems like this, it would be horrible to exclude um, this then, which is that it's a requirement for your own salvation. Yeah. The, the Bible mm-hmm. does, the Bible does say that, that um, yes, we, we do agree, agree with that. that um, oh, wow. Where does the Bible say that, that you have to preach, um, about the the Watchtower organization and that it's that's how you find salvation. Do you have um, so I can look up the scriptures on that? Um, well, it's a commandment of Jesus that it was a work that his uh, his true followers would be engaged mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. Um, was it, was that how they became his followers or or got salvation or because there's many commands in the Bible to those who are already Christians. It doesn't mean that's how you become a Christian or what basis you are a Christian on. So he was saying that's one of the ways to, to get salvation just because he's told them to do that. Well, uh, we definitely need to obey Jesus commandments right. to, to be saved. All of right. them. Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. So, uh, what? How are you doing on on the rest of them? Like, you know, he said to love your enemies, love people as much as yourself. Don't have any lustful thoughts. Um, so, does your salvation depend on that also? Well, uh, the, the Bible does show that uh, that we're imperfect, and that um, there's not, and as imperfect as sinners, um, there's not. Um, there's not anything we can do to earn salvation because Jehovah's kindness is undeserved. Oh, but, um, but here it do. says preaching is a requirement for your salvation. So you just contradicted yourself from what you previously said. Um, it's it sounds as if um it sounds well. I didn't say that, but preaching is uh, we do have to obey Jehovah's requirement to be and obey Jesus commandments to be saved. Okay. But um, But then you said it was undeserved because you know it says in Romans chapter 4 that if you do works for salvation then that's not grace. So it's it is teaching kind of that second thing you said that if there's we don't have anything that merits salvation and as it goes on in Romans it talks about that it says that your works really um Really, nobody does good or seeks after God, and we're all supposed to be just left, you know, helpless. And that's why Christ rescues us and does for us what we can't do ourselves. That's why you're having this confusion because 
they they insert a lot of things related to promoting the organization into your salvation. And that's a very scary um, place to be, that that would be the ground of you you think what merits uh, forgiveness. And you're right, the Bible says that we we can't save ourselves by our works. It says that in Romans 3 and 4, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, Titus 3, 4 and 5 not because of righteous things we have done. So their their works are more of a fruit of knowing that our sins are forgiven and having the Holy Spirit within and becoming a new creation in Christ. So that's why it's confusing, you know. It's kind of like they're saying both, you know. That they're saying... That it's not by your works, and then they say all these things you have to do to be saved or survive Armageddon. Well, Jehovah gives his undeserved kindness to those who are beaten to him and to those who... who uh, no, he gives death. he gives undeserved kindness, which is actually not a good interpretation of grace, which it means unmerited favor, that you can be in God's favor by trusting in what Christ has done for us, and that is enough not to rely on what you're doing. You you just said Jehovah gives undeserved kindness to those who do X, Y, and Z. Well, then it's deserved. Then it becomes merit. It becomes a wage, not a gift. It says that also in Romans. Have you ever read Romans straight through, like maybe in a different version of the Bible? Ma'am, the purpose of our work is to share some good news from the Bible and to help people who are find, looking for answers to the I, I, questions. I'll take that as a Bible. no, but I'd really recommend you do that. It's it's incredible. It's it's the logical you know chain of of redemption explains it from beginning to end, and it can really give you great joy and just change these these views that the Watchtower gives. It's a bondage. It's a horrible bondage. They're trying so, to. Um, um, I'm not going to engage in a theological debate with you. Would you read Romans um, straight through without, you know, in a different version, maybe? Um, you don't sound like someone who's looking for answers. You sound like someone who already knows what they believe and is looking to... I'm looking for uh, answers debate. from Scripture, not from Watchtower Publications. You couldn't even tell me if salvation is by faith alone or by works. You You have said both in just five minutes. So I'm going I'm going to end this conversation now. A great a great website is called answerjw.org.